And we're rolling. We are rolling. Cheers, buddy. Good to have you around. Cheers. Always a pleasure. Pleasure, man. Pleasure's always, always pleasure. mine. Haven't seen you in a while. And mm-hmm. This is a perfect setting than ever. Exactly. A little reuniting. Uh, definitely, man. I think we've always ended up hanging out and drinking in other venues. Always. Now we're at I Crossroads. Think, I think that's probably all the times that we hang out with. There has <laughs> always been a gig, a show. That's so true. Or alcohol, always, for some or reason. Or a festival of some sort. Exactly. Yep. We've never met, like, you know, to read or to knit or anything like that. It's always been something like this. That's, <laughs> That's so true. Let's keep it like know, that, you know? Uh, listen, I mean, like I prefer this, to be honest. Yes, yes. You too? Oh, yeah. Are we allowed there to we swear go, or not? Are we allowed to swear? We're allowed to swear. Just in case, because I have we're tendencies. Allowed. Dude, welcome to my world. <laughs> but, and, dude, you know, no, no, no. I was reading an article the other day. People that tend to swear a lot are intelligent. More intelligent Fuck than you yeah. ever. Right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Hence, we do what we do. Cheers. Cheers to that. And fuck the rest of the planet. There we, go. <laughs> there we go. This is exactly. off to a great start. I People know. are like, this, yes. this is it. They're going to It's going to be swear. intellectual yeah. as fuck. <laughs> All right. Oh, dude. So what have you been up to? I've seen, um, um, I follow your Instagram and stuff. Thank you. So uh, I've thank seen, you. I've seen that during COVID, you've been uh, spending money on motorcycles and yes, spend- <laughs> yes, it's a very smart move to do, right? Always like during that, yeah. As we Always. were saying earlier, I guess boredom. Fair, fair. And should have like you should be no, you should know better. Sorry, actually, like to save the money during the COVID thing. No, but people were like no. buying. I'm seeing no, people dude. buy useless shit. So no. I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna buy useless shit also. Exactly. I'm gonna go buy a mo- fucking motorcycle. Exactly. I started a there podcast. <laughs> I started a podcast. I mean, dude. Speaking of stupid shit. All right. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Oh, it's so amazing. It's fine. Shit it's happens. Amazing. Exactly. No, it's great. And, but uh, yeah, you have to keep busy. I mean, obviously. Um, I took over the uh, you know the new business venture. Yep. Um, we took the keys to that like two days before COVID hit. Awesome. So that was uh, yeah, that was a, that was like a great congratulations omen. by the way. Thank you. No, honestly, Thank and you. I'm super stoked. I can't wait for the yes, opening. Man. Yes. And I can't wait to head uh, down we there. Want and you, we want you there. It's yeah, be thanks, good, man. man. It's, I'm looking forward to it. You want to tell the guys what it is? Yes, it is actually play vintage. It's going to be Malta's probably only true like vintage guitar we're gonna have new guitars as well but it's a boutique hell it's yeah not, is it, there's an, as an experience like to buy you know and to chill it's definitely what guitarists and other musicians aspiring guitarists bassists you know ukulele players mandolin players stringed instruments you name it definitely it's definitely the vibe that we're going for and that is nothing awesome, like it in malta man. for sure so that is play vintage amazing. it'll be open i think first week of august so yeah oh hell yeah man so, definitely so doing, a, doing a, some sort of event for the opening and stuff I, you better. I better. Yeah. I think that's probably. I think it was the event opening party that actually pushed me to open the business in the first place. <laughs> it's like having everybody around that and was playing the music. Driving. That was like. Yeah, I built the whole business like, around it. Yes, the business model was I need to throw a huge party for this business. That's I love it. That. That, that's like yeah. No. All right, this is only our second beer. I love this. <laughs> this is great. Yes. Daniel Bazzino, welcome to the show, Thank man. You. Thank Pot you. Pot forbid is pleasure. honored to have you on, honestly. So, Thank you, man. I love it. What, introduce yourself to the guys. So, um, I'm going to start from my name. You already said my name. But, Go ahead. Um, Say it again. We love Daniel it. Daniel Bazzino. I hate saying my name. It's Why? Like, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. It's I'm awesome. I'm going to start talking Speaking about which, myself in the third person. You're a head. You know what Benzina is in Libya? Oil. Fuel. Fuel. Gas. It's in Italian also, I think. Oh, right. Probably. Yeah. Benzina. I, I, exactly. Don't quote me on this, everyone yeah. else, but I think it means probably oil is. as oil? well. Oil? All right. Is okay. it oil? Oh, oh, I think. No, fuel. Is fuel, it? yeah. Benzina. Yeah, benzina. Fuel. Okay. Exactly. Fuel. So Not that's oil, yeah. So, yeah. so for me, it's like, and you're a piston head. I know yes. that for a fact. Yes, I am. So for me, it's like, it's so easy to remember your name. It's this like, actually made me realize that. Because being you're a piston joking. head and having a surname, that really just... There we go, epiphany. Yeah, epiphany Moment. right here, man. See? There you go, man. On our second yeah. pint, we have an epiphany of my name. <laughs> <laughs> All right, a few more. And we'll dig into your... <laughs> we'll dig in. We'll dig in. We'll get, we'll get Definitely. It's going to get deep. Oh, hell yeah. I can't even see you anymore. <laughs> mm. So, so what do continue. I do? What do you do? Um, a lot of shit. Depends who you ask. But... <laughs> No, None of the ex-girlfriends. I think I do? None of the okay. ex-girlfriends. None of the exes. <laughs> what do I think I do? Okay, well, basically, um, most people know me as a musician here. Obviously. 100%. Been Great musician, guitarist too. Guitarist for Slit, band I founded in 99. Hell yeah. A um, few albums, lots of tours, <laughs> lots of tours <laughs> with that band. Um, then, obviously, I have a broken design. Repping the merch right here. Fuck yeah. yeah. There you go. 
that's like the latest project, the one where, you know, I'm pretty Which happy with that. Amazing. I've Thank seen you guys you. play a few times. And Thank you. Fuck Thank me. You. Every time I see you guys, I have a good time. Good. Now, honestly, good. that is that is one thing. And obviously your music's on point. You guys are tight as hell. Cheers. And um, uh, shout out to the rest of the guys. Uh, you guys keep doing what you're doing because you're doing it right. Cool. And it's in, definitely on the island, distinctive tones and distinctive yes. sound. We try. We strive oh, no, for no, that. Oh, no, no, trust me. We strive me. for that. The You've melodies, done a you know, great job. We strive for that. It's a bit, it gives me more space to spread my wings than with my previous bands. Um, obviously, when I'm doing a session, um, when I'm on tour as a session player, obviously, you're just doing <laughs> that's a lot of traffic <laughs> coming through. <laughs> Welcome Speaking to of douchebags, man. All right, we get it. All right, I wouldn't be surprised if he's Egyptian. How <laughs> dare they interrupt me midway through my history? Of course, I'm really sorry. Please start over. <laughs> but oh, yeah, man. Um, so Slit, obviously, that was honking. like my that was like my first band. You know, I was like probably 18 when I formed that. Started hitting the road, got signed when I was like 19 or 20. With nice. Them. So that was like you know learning of the business. Of course, the biz. at a very very young age. Very of course, young man. Age, How many times have you got screwed? Um, Countless. Over, screwed over, hey, screwed yeah. on the screwed, road. You mean? No, oh, no, screwed, screwed over, over. <laughs> screwed over. No, um, no, none of your sexual life. No, I don't, we're not going to no, discuss no, no, that we're on not camera. Go into, no, <laughs> no, there is none. That's why. <laughs> um, All right, ladies, over. you know what to do. Let's see. Uh, even at our level, that, that happens constantly. Oh, of course, that happens. Of course, constantly. of course, of course, man. It's sort of part and parcel with the biz, as 100%, they say. 100%. But there's a lot of fucking leeches. Yeah, in the music of course, man. At any level. I mean, they will fucking, you know, they'll sell their own mother to you if it'll just get them one inch off oh. the ladder, you know what I mean? And they'll just fuck you over. Like, For a dollar extra, yeah. they'll, and they'll fuck you they over. They don't even care if you're starting out, you're young kids, you know? Yeah. You probably have no money. They'll, they'll still rob you of the money you don't even have. That's or haven't so even true. made yet because the tour so hasn't true. started. That is and they're already so seeing how they get their goddamn greedy po- you know, hands in your little pockets, you know? 19-year-old band, man. you know, out of the country. Of like, we don't know what we're doing. Of course, they're disgusting. But, yeah, but you learn a lot from that about. experiences. Um, obviously, I mean... I'm trying to take Broken Design now on the road. Obviously, we were supposed to hit, start hitting the road uh, March. We were supposed to start in Romania and then, you know, had the album supposed to be released in yep. May. But, you know, the Rona hit. COVID. And Rona, the bitch she is, yep. put a, put a, you know, <laughs> put a hogwash on that. But So we had to re um, Literally to reschedule. Literally all your fucking... Exactly. Yeah. So obviously now with a broken design, the new album, Another Day in Hell. Nice. Oh, Very. dude, I heard some. Did you like the single? Dude! Dude, speaking of like, I fell in love with that shit. It was playing on repeat for a while. Good, but man, fuck me, Good, those I'm riffs. Glad. Those glad. riffs were from hell, man. And it's amazing. So, what inspires you to write that sort of stuff? Um, that's personal stuff. Right. Not like I can't talk about it. No, but fair enough. It comes from uh, the personal, personal space. It doesn't like come from. It's like half like this is a great riff. Oh, it's gonna be no, looks no. so boss playing it. Yeah. It doesn't come from that. When, <laughs> it looks when boss like, playing it. <laughs> The most yeah, shallowest like, looks shit. every guitarist, I know, I every know. guitarist has a shallow I point. Know. You're like, this riff may not fit the song, but it's gonna look so fucking good with one foot on the monitor playing this fucking riff. So it's gonna yep. be in the song. We yep. tend not to use those kind of riffs, nice. or we'll, we'll morph them. But um, I worked closely at the time we wrote it. Me and Chris, our drummer, wrote it um, like musically. Okay. Um, obviously, and then Brandon obviously came in with all the melodies, wow, all the lyrics. So that's all him, you know. Wow. I, Shout out to Brandon, though. Yeah. I mean, definitely. Definitely. Here's to Brandon, I mean, man. Fuck me, dude. You got to come over at some point. Yeah. I want you sat here. I'm going to pick your brains a bit. He yeah. will talk for hours with mm. you about Star Wars. I'm I sure. know. And he's lately, he started like a book club. <laughs> Yeah, I know. He will, Which he is will great. talk to you for hours on that. Which he probably will great. not talk about music. That's awesome. And that's what I want him to do. <laughs> <Good>. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Come over. Give me a break, Brandon. <laughs> we love you, I'll bro. I'll talk about music. Don't worry. <laughs> um, so yeah, this one was. This was a tough one. This was. Um, it's almost an album that will never come out. I'm not going to jinx it. I'll touch wood because it was supposed to come out in May. Yep. Um, and we actually have a song called "Curse of May" anyway. Yeah. Because of shit that was going on two years ago, a year and a half ago, we started the writing of this album. You know, I'm born in May, right? You were born in May, okay. Well, you might like it, though. It's called <laughs> The Curse of May. That's great. It's like my it's, existence. It's, it's basically um, all the members at the time had a lot of shit happen to them in that month, so we just sort of wrote a song right. about that. Right, right, right. right Obviously, right. then you hear the, the title track and the title of the album, Another Day in Hell, so it's like being stuck in a mental state where it's like every day is the same, you really can't get out of it. Everyone gets, goes through this. Luckily, we have the outlet that we can actually yes. express it in a way. And Curse yes. of May, obviously, we didn't think about our own creation, so we decided to release it in May of this year. 
Wow, all right. Not even bearing in mind that May is a very unlucky month for the band. So obviously, mm. May came know? around, we can't release the album. Yes. So now it's coming out September 26th at the garage. We'll be releasing awesome. it. Awesome, we'll definitely be there. Unless a second wave hits or something, but yeah, that's the plan. Even if it does, we'll be there. And we'll, we'll do something. We'll, we'll definitely podcast will. it. I exactly, mean, I we'll, we'll do something. It has something. to come out, you know? Dude, we could... It has to come out. Has we have to. to release it off of us now. It's like it's been That's written, it. it's, it's been like, recorded. Uh, we want people to hear it. Mixed, mastered, ready yeah, to go. Yeah, it's yeah. good. I actually think, uh, he's going to hate me for it, but I actually think it's Brendan's best ever vocal performances from all the bands he's had. Wow. I'm not going to lie and say that. I just that And is, it's not because he's in the band with me, but we put him <laughs> a lot in the studio. But I think other people heard it. Will you say made his life hell. It's his best vocal performances for, yeah. for sure. Fuck yeah. No, I, I bet. I bet. I mean, I've seen you guys live a few times, and fuck me. Even live. It's tight, and Brandon fucking brings it on. Yeah, we try and bring the ruckus. Yeah, last time I saw (laughs) you playing was for that um, at the garage. Was the Metallica gig? Metallica trip. That was a great fucking show. That was. I had so much fun. That was a fun one. That was like reliving my youth. Exactly. I I was reliving my youth, man. That's the thing. Everyone in the crowd was like, it was like 1990 or whatever. Whatever (laughs) whatever year that they got into Metallica, everyone starts with Metallica. At some point, yes. To the heaviest, yes. We all start with Uriah Heep, Purple, Zeppelin, Sabbath. That's how I started. I started off with Zeppelin. Oh shit! I still listen to them. I still love Kiss, man. That's how I started. You know, from my father's collection. Same here. I started on my my dad's collection. So tell me your story. What influenced you? Um. Well, my father had all these. He was always into rock music. Of course, then I had my sister when she was, you know, she's a bit older than me. But there was a point where, when she became a teenager, at that time, um, the the biggest bands were like um, Motley Crue and Guns N' Roses. Hell like yeah. around I love that era. I think it was the yeah, Use Your Illusion tour. Oh, okay. Um, I think it was around, around yeah. that era though. Yeah. Doctor Feelgood came out. Fuck I think yeah. it's 1991, Nin- something like that. No, it was 80 something. 89, 88. Was it late 89. Yeah. 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 So I would have my father listen to, you know, Zeppelin, Golden Earring, and Nugent, you know, MC5, Sabbath. And then I'll just walk upstairs, and then I hear, you know, like, Winger and Molly Crew. And oh, Guns hell and yeah, dude. I fucking you love know, that stuff. Uh, you yeah. two, obviously, at that time. But I had uh-huh. this whole mix, you know. Cool, man. And I'm like, See, you're probably the first person who ever mentioned Winger to me, man. Winger, man, I love Winger. Dude, love, same here. Kip him. is the shit, Kip bro. Winger, he's a good singer, He's man. the shit, Sing bro. Is, I think and most super know underrated. It, but a lot of people don't know what I love. Eighties cheesy, dude. Metal I started a project based on that pop songs, dude. I I, I started that. a project based on that, man. Oh, wait, dude, fucking eighties sappy ballads yes. and cheesy yes. fucking riffs. Like miles I love away it. of winger, you know. I'm currently miles going through. Away. Uh, I'm currently fucking going through a wasp phase, stuff. man. I am just eating up everything wasp at the moment. Right. So here's how I got into that. And a shout out to Hanny Cut back home. Right. So this guy. He's got the best voice I've ever heard in my life, okay. right? And uh, we, we used to sit down and fucking play for hours. Nice. And the shit he would come up with was mainly from that era. And he's introduced me to fucking K- Winger. He introduced me to Wasp. He introduced me to fucking Extreme. And Nelson? Dude, you remember Nelson? No. Oh, Nelson. They were like twins. Cinderella as well. Yeah, yeah, remember Cinderella. Cinderella. <laughs> Cinderella, dude. Tolkien. <laughs> This is like, you know... That era was amazing. That was songwriter era. Exactly. Because their exactly. ballads, I mean, let alone their rocking tracks, but there's certain ballads... Dude, dude you can't the, touch. Timeless. You cannot touch. Timeless. They're timeless. 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 It's true. That's what, you know... That's so true, And believe man. it or not, that's what... We don't sound like that, obviously, but it's yeah, that yeah, era and that... Mix. That sort of ideas that they had, that they really pushed themselves when it came to songwriting. Oh, yes. And that's what we do oh, with yes. a broken design. We will... Our worst critic. We that's are definitely our worst critic. We will scrap a song or melody. I don't know how many times. No, oh, wow. Until it sounds wow. the way we're, we respect, say. Man. If I had to put this CD on, yep. Is this what I want to hear? Not as a whole song. We'll be like the whole song sounds great, but you know what? This last chorus or this middle section, it's not technically what I would expect to hear with the flow of the song. So we will analyze it to that effect. Wow. And we, we That's a lot of work. It man. is. It that is, is a lot of is. work. The songwriting man. this time it took a bit of a, a process, but but I heard the maturity few, though as well. Yeah, that's the thing. Yeah, I, the heard, I heard the maturity, man. Yeah. It's like yeah, these guys are not fucking you know going on the road and doing this for the fun of it. Yeah, yeah. These guys are really meaning something. Yeah, especially it's not with like the last the copy paste thing. Oh yeah, yeah. No, no. Like even no, the definitely. most important thing in a song as well, the way I see it, at least um, writing for all these years, especially now in this style, where everything is in the open because it's not like you know heavy metal. Ooh, yeah. that was close. <laughs> right. <laughs> Note to self: Close the fucking window next week. All right. <laughs> uh, 
was yeah. The train of th- yeah, so basically yeah. on the writing is um, the transitioning from parts. It's like almost like building a house. So you have like, you know, your pediment and you're building up the floors. You can't just half-ass it. Of course. You need like a proper segue. I 100%. It. it has to flow. And that could be the most simplest way or it could not be the most simplest way. But that's where the thought goes into. It's like more than the sum of its parts. Yeah. Like with certain styles, you could get away with it because it sounds actually cool. Like stop here, give us a fucking hi hat, yeah. and hit the riff on its own. Yeah. Certain styles will work. We're trying to do. We're trying to actually push ourselves more. Yeah. Sometimes we'll do it because sometimes simple is best. But sometimes we'll be like, listen, instead of like stopping, let's actually think. Can we keep playing and segue in without sounding too proggy? Without right. sounding just putting shit. Just for the sake of putting Put shit, shit in. on, yes, and yes. we can't wait for people to hear it. Honestly, that's honestly, amazing. I can't wait. I can't wait to get my hands on the word. album. As honestly. an old fart, I feel like I've <laughs> oh, come on now. <laughs> oh, come on now. All right, no, but honestly, here. cheers. I'm gonna need another one soon. <laughs> You're outdoing me, dude. Get your shit together. All right, <laughs> it, was, it was hot today. It was hot. It was hot. Uh, I'm thirsty as hell. You see me drink, drinking my Gatorade, get my salt and sugars. <laughs> Get my fucking electrolytes in. <laughs> mm. It is so good to catch up, honestly, because it's know. been how long? I think I've seen you last year at that yeah. open air festival. So exactly. Exactly. But that open air alcohol festival with lots yes. of bands. Yes. That was the last time I saw you. Yes. And I think we, we were breaking to. up a fight that night. We did. <laughs> We did end up breaking up a fight. <laughs> we we did. I hadn't seen you in ages. <laughs> and the mosh pit opens up. I and I go in because everyone yeah. knows people involved. Exactly. And I'm like, we're all breaking and people up. up. I'm like, exactly. oh, fuck. Oh, Lord. shit. You're, you're here? here? You're here? Oh, man. All right. Yeah, yeah. Wait a second. I'm going to get my beer. Second, wait a second. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's, let's get this out of the way. Let's calm this shit exactly. down. Exactly. <laughs> that was great, man. That was good man. fun. That was great. Oh, man. I had a great night that night. And yeah, there was a was few a really good bands on as well. On well, the, you know, the Monday field. night. Exactly. That's the night, man. That's exactly. the night. That's the night we take over shit. 100%. That's we come in for you. That's it. <laughs> Fucking run. Lock up your daughter. Lock up your wife. No, but hell yeah, man. I had a good time that year. Um, so, what are your future plans, man? Other than the uh, other than the the album coming yes, out and exactly. so on. Um, tour well, coming up. We have to reschedule the Broken Design tour, especially to promote the album. Um, right. With Slit, we were supposed to have an album written and recorded and probably touring by now on it, but that right. got put away. So what's the deal with Slit? Um, we we well we have um, you know um, label backing awesome um, but we need to produce an album right but sort of this year is like a washout the year that never happened mm, and of it was course. supposed to be this year so we're gonna have to just postpone everything the tour and the and the writing of the album we just have a few ideas here and there like three That's songs awesome. but you know we need to produce like a full 10 12 track album so, right, what do you think of so everybody nowadays is going for like the whole singles release thing yeah what are your thoughts on that I think. The thing is, um, it harkens back to the days of the 50s, where everyone would actually just release a single. Mm. Fuck, I never thought of you that. You know? I never fucking thought of that. You're right. It's like, you know, like... You're right. Like Richie Valens, th- those eras. Yes. Elvis at the first time, just releasing 45s. Yes. You know, they give you a B-side, yes. and that was it, before the whole sort of album format yes. took, took place. Took shape. Yes. Obviously, that went on till I think, 90s, 2000s. We still had singles charts. True. People would still release a single. It's going back to that now... It actually makes sense because of the way the format and the industry changed. It's like, give us something visual. Yes. Uh, which is like we did. But I still can't just release a single and leave it. It has to be part of an EP or an album. Right. Because I'm, I'm, I'm stupid old school like that, you yeah, know? Because when I was thinking about, like, for example, when you go singles and so on, I mean, you release three, four songs. But that's also as much as you can fit on a record. Yeah. Right? So then, yeah. if you look at, you know, we kind of think of... And I'm, I'm going to mention it. I mean, Spotify, yeah, Deezer, yeah, yeah, all exactly. these guys. I mean, the electronic platforms nowadays. There is a formula. Yeah, definitely. There is a formula. There is a formula. Do um, you conform to that formula? Yes and no. I mean, the thing is, you really you have to dance with the devil at some point. Oh. You just really do. Yes. I mean, especially if you're just starting out. I mean, if we're, we're at Taylor Swift's position... Where we say, fuck y'all. No, I'm not doing that. Yang streaming my shit. Yeah. But, you know, I of course. Mean, Kudos to her. She's still going to get a million from some fucking product placement in her video anyway. So she doesn't need There Spotify. we go. There you it's go. It's like that added expense probably to her that she's going to get taxed on. <laughs> so her account has probably said, uh, you know what? Fuck Brush off, it under the rug. Know? Exactly. Brush it under the rug. You don't need that. You yeah, know? exactly. Pepsi is giving you enough shit anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so. Yeah, true. So. Speaking of uh, which, 
So you got to wait. Would you sell your soul to the devil in that sense? Haven't I already? Haven't I already? I love oh, you. What, what, I love you, <laughs> bro. Sense, I mean, love you. Well, no, let's, if I sense. did sell my soul to him, I got a short end of the deal on that one. Let's put it that way. Yeah, no, for enough. We should be having this podcast on my yacht somewhere in Cannes right now. Dude, and, and you tell me. I'll be there. I'll bring the beers. Okay. All Done. Right. I, will, I will own my own brewery by then. Let's, let's put it that way. Speaking of which, what kind of beer are you into? Anything with alcohol in it. Oh, I love you. That's why we're <laughs> friends, man. I don't know what this is, but it's good. Is this one we had before, right? This is one we had before. It's good. And that's I haven't had this in a while. I haven't had it in a really long it time. But this, like is the first, this is the second time I have it on tap. Have you ever had kidney stones? No. Okay, because if you do and you start pissing this color, oh, yeah. you got to go to the hospital. Definitely, Take guys. it from me. That's experience. Yeah, that is, oh, shit. Yeah. That's when you know. That's, that's how you know you got blood in it. That's, yeah. Yeah, that's, how you yeah, know. that's when you know. And, and when the hurts. doctor asks you what color is it, tell him <laughs> this like, color. like this brand of the beer. beer. Exactly. And he'll know exactly. If you're mold, he'll know exactly what you're talking about. This brand of beer. If you want to sponsor this podcast, please get in touch with me yes. anytime of today. See that's you later. a great name. There you this go. brand of beer. This brand of – holy f- – you know what? Copyright that shit. I'm going to write that shit down. <laughs> Copyright that shit. No, 100%. This man. brand of beer. This TM. That's mine. <laughs> I love that, man. Dude, that is creative. As hell. I know, man. Yeah. It, it, it shit just comes to me. What can I say? Mm-hmm. <laughs> shit just happens, man. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> exactly. So, um, moving on. What influences? Back to influences. Because we spoke about, you just mentioned a bunch of stuff from the 70s, sappy oh, yeah. ballads from the 80s, yeah. and then those hair metal bands and glam and stuff. Of course. And then. Moving on to the day, what do you listen to now if you're driving? you got a beautiful Mustang, speaking of which. Thank you. So Thank you, my baby. what do you blast in the Mustang when you're driving down the coast road? Um, just the, the, the engine. The Detroit cubic engine. That's the only thing I <laughs> what blast. What exhaust do you have on her? That has, uh, well, it has a highly modified exhaust system. Yeah, now we're talking. Um, but then, obviously, it goes to like a Flowmaster, the usual. But then it has a cutout. which Okay. If it's not loud enough, and I yep. really, really want to go for a cruise, like through Marsa Schluck or something yeah. on the front, and if I really want to ruin people's dinners, <laughs> I will open the cutout, which opens onto oh, the side shit. of the table. Oh, and I love it. So it's an open exhaust now. I love it. So it's like a drag car. And you, you can technically, I mean, you could hear them sometimes. Light up a cigarette you, off of it every once in a while. Yeah, pretty much. So yeah. if you rev it just going slowly by them you just see people just he's getting startled back he's and forth and nice and drop them it's fun that's amazing it's the you most know what? fun that's you could have going five miles an hour in that 100%, car man. but yeah, that's priceless bro it's i priceless. love doing that because I, I i i had a bunch of cool trucks and stuff and yeah, i'm, I'm you know a proper hillbilly bro yeah, i mean i'm a, a hillbilly, proper you know hillbilly it. so for me i mean having a loud exhaust is a must <laughs> yes you know, i had magda flows on my truck back in back in the day and then I did a cutout, and where it, where it comes out from the back of the bed, like a, like a Kenworth Shape truck. Up. Yeah, it's it's shapes proper up. Yosemite Flaps. Sam kind of shit. Oh, yeah, hell yeah. Jesus Christ. Man. This <laughs> is how we do it. <laughs> so, yeah. That was fun. That's proper redneck truck. Oh, right dude, there. definitely, man. Jesus, Lifted, fucking, yeah, yeah. 5.7 Hemi. Gun rack. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> dude, I had a fucking mount in the back. I'm not going to admit to this online, all right? No, I didn't have a gun mount in the back. All right. didn't. He didn't. He didn't. I did not. Right. Oh, shit. No, but yeah, dude, I had a bunch of crazy shit on her. I had um, a supercharger. I had a Magnaflows. I had a chip tuned as well. Jesus so Christ, man. It was That's a 5.7 Hemi. You hit the, what, the, crazy the dunes? You used to hit the sand dunes? I had, uh, everything, bro. It used, to, it used to be really cool because you could switch it, obviously, you know, from yeah. four wheel. It was a four wheel driver, but you could Yeah, but not like active control four wheel. Exactly. Control it, yeah. control it. So I used to drag that thing. I used to fucking hit Jesus the dunes Christ, with that. Dude. We used to go fucking off road just for the hell of it. I have to do the dunes. I've seen dude, that. Dude, I would love to take you, man. Oh, I have to do that one day. Dude, we will. And we will. Definitely. I promise you we will. I've seen a few of these online videos. Uh, I think it's in Dubai. Oh, these crazy right. Nissan are, patrols yeah. with quad turbo Oh, shit. V8. Those are fucking crazy. Have you seen? They've got like this drag race up there, man. All right. You got to see this. This is crazy. Google this shit up. Man. I will. I will. Because so, this, this is how I go to sleep. At night. Exactly. I look up this shit. This is my porn. <laughs> That's it. Exactly. <laughs> Fuck Pornhub. All right. No. This is this is crazy. Google this shit. They've got this little drag race that goes up the dune. Yeah. I don't drag know you, race up the dune. Up the dune. Okay. It's okay. crazy. And they've got okay. these modified vehicles with crazy fucking tires. Ridiculous dude. horsepower. Ridiculous. Ridiculous torque. I know. They're and like it just four fucking, number horsepower. Like, like 1,200 horsepower. Fucking ridiculous. Like 
I was seeing Ridiculous. this Nissan one because I think they, they got patrol? it. On a, yeah, yeah, the patrol. It's sleeper. It's fucking crazy. Standard man. tires, standard rims, got mm. bumper scratches from like, you know, <laughs> parallel parking. Yeah, exactly. You wouldn't know it. Sleeper, you wouldn't proper know it. fucking sleeper, man. And this shit has oh. like 1,500 brake horsepower mm-hmm. with quad turbo. And he exactly. just he flies over the dunes. It's yeah, like, yeah, dude. It's, it's like it's not nothing. Even a thing. It's nothing. nothing it's nothing, man. Well, one thing they're known for now in that part of the world is, is actually fl- making the car go on two oh, wheels. Yeah, Have you seen that shit? That's just crazy. Dude. It's change, crazy. They change a the tire. They change the tire, tire while the car's fueling. <laughs> exactly. Google that shit, guys. It is fucking crazy. They would actually make the car that drive on. From the, from the drift videos. Because obviously, that's exactly. like Dubai and Libya. They have that exactly. crazy, crazy drifting in Yo, cars yeah. that are not designed, designed for drift. Designed for drift. Exactly. The front-wheel drive saloon. Yes. Camrys. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And make Altima's. Be, yeah. The most boringest fucking car cars, in the world. Yeah. And they make it look like more exciting than a fucking GTR <laughs> or a- AE86. It's, it's like crazy some of the shit they do, man. Honestly, I've seen it a few times. And some of the. You've yeah, seen that like yeah, live, live, live. Yeah, 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 yeah. People no. get hurt, though, right? Oh, of course. People I've seen people die, like, man. Yeah. yeah, fly out of fucking. Yeah, they fly dude. out of cars. They fly you see out of cars. Limbs flying out. Exactly. And I mean, it's a nice family outing. I <laughs> <know>. <laughs> that is gory. But yeah, no, honestly, these guys don't give a shit because it's, it's cool. And that's like. But that's what happens when you don't have alcohol and women around. You know that's what I mean? True. So true. you so get creative. Really, You're yeah. bored as fuck. Idle what am I going to do? Idle <laughs> hands. <laughs> Idle hands. What, do I, what can I but do imagine, with a Nissan Altima? Imagine if you took that and now you added alcohol and women. Then that you think would stop. Shit would calm down. That would calm down. Really? Yeah, yeah. Especially if you it legalize like be pot, right? No, no, no. Especially if you legalize pot. So it's not legal there. I mean, no, no, it's a stupid no, no, question. No, no, I mean, no, no. alcohol's not even. I mean, you know, yeah, but I mean, like in, in, in the UAE, in UAE, I've got, each country's got its own laws. But yeah. like Saudi and so on, no, that's a big no-no. Wow, definitely. Still, okay. yeah, 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 that's definitely. But as I said, it still happens. Oh, it still happens, bro. I mean, some of the stuff I've I've seen up there, man, is is. I'm nuts. assuming there's a black market though, because anything oh, that's outlawed, oh, like yes. the prohibition in oh, the U.S. Yes, bro. Because it's human nature, like, right? But, but look what we got from bootlegging. Yeah, drag NASCAR. Ra- NASCAR and drag yeah, racing. NASCAR, yeah, exactly. NASCAR. Like the moonshine NASCAR. boys. That's drag it. We got NASCAR, man, taking the left turns so, all day, bro. See. Exactly. You know, I'm sure. I'm sure in the UAE, they, they might something might come out of that. You never know, movie, man. Exactly. You know? But I mean. I don't think it's they're that almost smart. A semi sport. Yeah. It is. It is that a crazy sport. drifting. Oh is, yes, it is almost is a semi. Yes, there's a TV channel in the Middle East that's just dedicated to cars and it's, that sort exactly. of stuff, and they like broadcast it like it's, it's nothing. Crazy. Yeah, yeah, it's no, crazy. no. Some of the guys would like get out of their car while the car's spinning yeah, around yeah, them. You know what I mean? And they'll just get back it's in. Crazy. And, yeah, and it's, it's like fucking nuts. They could do that. I mean, I mean, you know. We know there's a bunch of rich folk there. Mm. They're not doing it in their Lambos and Koenigs. No, 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 no. They're doing it in their like proper shitty. Re- They're re- just buying a 2002 Camry. Exactly, exactly. Because <laughs> hubcaps and all. Oh uh, yeah, exactly. Hubcaps. That's so and true. And it's filled with their friends. It's like six people in a Camry. <laughs> we're gonna drift this motherfucker. That's what we're gonna do for some like three videos, miles straight. Some of those videos are <laughs> crazy, crazy, man. I swear it's to crazy. God. It's like three sixty. I mean, they're fucking proper Hollywood kind yes. of shit, you know? Yes. Oh shit, we lost camera. Oh fuck, how long? Three, two, one, and we're back, man. We're back. Definitely, we're back. Yes. So, yeah, some of the cars, as I was saying earlier, some of these guys would literally get out of their cars while the fucking cars would be spinning around them, drifting like crazy. And just crazy. Some of the stuff they would do is just I, ridiculous. I enjoy those videos immensely for some reason. I don't know why. Mm. And it's like, I'd love to be Me part too. of that, but at the same time, not. Because shit could go wrong really easily with that. Really I mean, fast, I've seen too. the videos when shit goes wrong, and shit goes wrong like this man and yeah. when you do see the sand dunes is more I'm not really an off-roading guy I'll be right. honest right okay but because it's something different now, I've done a few rallies oh so, nice so yeah we'll talk about that off the camera right. yeah yeah some of the yeah okay some of the were really interesting some of them are really fucking hated okay but yeah I know <laughs> yeah some of them just wanted like you know what I want to throw the towel in at this point so it was like an enduro rally yeah in what kind of vehicle off-roading vehicle and oh, it was okay. off-road the whole thing was off-road okay yeah no, it's good fun. Don't get me wrong. I love it. Okay. I love it. But, again, there's some of them that you just go, why the fuck did I do this in the first place? You it's know? funny you bring this up because I had a friend. She's probably going to laugh when she sees this. But I had a friend mention this to me, and I'm actually considering it. Right. But it takes place in India. Okay. And it's like eight days, but you have to do it in a tuk-tuk. You're joking. 
Oh shit! I, I want to do this with the idea. I want to do this. Well, we need three people. You could be our third. Dude, I want this. You've been. You're, I could say you're, you're like. I could say you're ex army or whatever. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you've got the training. A I don't. Bit. Yeah, yeah. I will fucking be shitting my innards probably by the second Dude, I day. I would love that. But it's been mentioned to me, and it's like. Three people is the max, and it's like eight days on the coast of India. Fuck yeah, dude. Let's do this. I've been to India. I've been to India. I have. All right. I've been to India. Yeah, yeah, dude. Let's I have do this. So it's like an, in a tuk tuk. Dude, they're not, they're not really comfortable. No, they're though, not. Right? No, 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 bad no. back. No. Oh, I heard that they're right. not comfortable. Yeah, they're not comfortable, bro. But this no, is like no. this is like proper like gumball, but in a tuk tuk with other tuk tuk races. <laughs> so we could get like, dude, I'm down. I'm down. Let's make this fucking thing happen. Oh shit! No, I'm now serious. that I said no, it, no, no, you said it. Now, now we're now fucked. Now, now we have to do it. I am proper fuck now. I, I have to do it. Dude, now. we'll talk about this. No, no, no. Off right. air, we will talk about this. Let's Since get you this were going. mentioning how, because it just popped into my head. It's like I was thinking, you know, having my own thoughts, and you're saying you were in an off-road truck, yeah, which yeah. is built for that it was kind built of for that shit. Yeah, yeah. And I'm thinking a tuk-tuk is not, dude. That's and the it's whole like point. Eight to but ten days. Yes, but if you learn techniques when you drive off-road, that you could apply to a tuk-tuk. Anything with wheels, basically. I don't even know how to fucking drive it. To the, that's like Dude, a motorcycle. It is right? a motorcycle with, 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 on steroids. with seats for two, on di- steroids. two dickheads in exactly. the back, right? More sometimes. Jesus Christ. <laughs> this killed me. Yeah, this should be good. That's so true. Well, I, I had my fun, immunization, though. I guess. I got that Dude. shit before I went oh, on tour in Brazil. So oh, I guess shit. I'm, I yeah, guess by I'm the way, you were, you were on tour with Brazil yes. with Beheaded, weren't you? Yes, I was. That was, that was awesome. a great experience. I bet. So There was a lot of stories. You get sick? Um, not in the way that I thought I would. <laughs> Believe it or alcohol. not, I, I just yeah. I I think the alcohol just, w- just got, weared it off. Exactly. I only got a common cold. All right. And since we the traveling between each show was so fucking grueling and long, yeah, that I actually went through the phase of having a cold, and it passing by the time I got to the next one. show. Oh right. Okay. That's awesome. It's just like the like the two flights per morning to get to the next show. Yep. So it's like 12 shows, 17 flights, 19 flights. You're joking. I've never taken so many flights in such a short period of time. Fuck me, Even bro. our gear and the luggage was like, fuck it, I'm out. <laughs> I just gave <laughs> out. Cause like, You're uh, joking. You know, everything fuck, was like dude. dismantled, e- including my back. I was fucking uh, gone I by bet. the last show. I bet. But I think it was the, the super heat or sometimes rain and super cold that they were having, plus yeah. the air conditioning of the airplanes. Yes, I hate that. And like, then, no, no, no. Yeah. I genuinely fucking yeah. hate that. And there was dude, one plane that didn't have any air conditioning. And it failed to take off. So that was a, a really funny thing. Because it was funny because with the amount of flights we were taking, our base's joker, he was just, he, he sort of jokingly said to me, he's like, there's a, a ratio of how many accidents, like oh, how, how safe right. it is to fly yeah, compared yeah. to a car yeah. accident. Yeah. But he's like, at the rate that we're taking, two flights per day, sometimes yeah, three. three. Yeah. He's like, we're really pushing that ratio. Yeah. And I think it was on that same day we were going to catch... Um, a passenger plane, but it was not a turbine engine. It was oh, propeller. Was it prop? Yeah, because yeah. it prop. was really far up near the Amazon. This, this oh, place we had shit. to go to, okay. so they didn't have the proper landing strip for like a, jo- a Boeing kind mean, of plane. Okay, so it was like you know a passenger plane, but we just with two propellers. What's the metal scene like in in it's the Amazon? Is near the Amazon anywhere in Brazil? The metal scene is fucking. Of course it is. Of course it is. It was beyond my expectation. I bet they I mean, still. Dude, I grew Live up it. listening they to Sepultura, it. man. I grew up listening you know, to Sepultura, Crisian, Crisian, Sepultura, man. Sepultura, they're like, all gods of there Of course, still. man. They're all gods there. And there were some course. amazing fucking bands. Amazing bet, bands. Especially Nervo bet. Chaos, um, who just played with Sepultura, in fact. No way, man. We were so, on tour with them and Jupiterian, which is a fucking amazing, amazing doom band. Want to hear a funny story? <laughs> Hit me. I took Hit my me. wife to her first metal scene, to her first metal show, which was... Max Cavallaro with Soulfly. She came up wearing sandals. Oh, shit. And we were in the front row. Oh, shit. Dude, you know exactly what happened, which was great for me. I mean, she went home. Was, for you, of course, yeah, yeah, but what did great. she think of it? <laughs> she hated it. Of course. She's never been to any other shows with me. That was it, really? That was it. Wow. That was it. She wants to go somewhere. You made and broke her in the pretty first much, yeah, metal pretty show. Pretty much, yeah, pretty much. First metal too. show. She, <laughs> she wanted to be there. I was like, okay, I got an extra ticket. You could have not maybe taken I, her front row. But I should have I I briefed her. I should have briefed her. I should have briefed her, man. But yeah. You need the briefing, my friend. And then, because oh, the we were in the front rows, and, and Max basically spilled his water on us, right? And she awesome. Goes, right? She went, ew. And I was like, mm. it's water, though. Yeah, Other exactly. bands will throw, you know, uh, meat stuff. or blood. Yeah, exactly. You know, Other stuff. Ovulating pads or something. They'll throw anything to get. 
<laughs> exactly. That's, that's where she went wrong. It's like, yeah, you don't understand. He's a god to me, man. I grew up listening to that shit, man. Yeah, I mean, and, you know, definitely. Shit. I discovered still, him at you know. a very young age and kind of influenced me a lot. Because, oh, yeah. um, as I said, man, as I got older, I kind of got into the 80s stuff. But before that, yeah. it, was less, it, was, it was my dad's records, obviously. Then I discovered Masters of Reality by Sabbath. And then Children of the Grave kind of spoke to me on a different level. That's and that, and then, and then to me, it was like because I used to sit down for hours with headphones hats exactly. on and just That's fucking listen to music for you can't days. Really do that nowadays because it was the, it was a combination of the headphones and the album art, that is true. physical in that your hands. That is true, and then reading the lyrics really as you go along. Exactly. exactly That's man. what really sort of embedded it in me. That's nowadays. so true. I'm the same. I I could do it. I mean, you can. You could start vinyls making a comeback. Yes, I hope but so. But it's not part of the culture the way it was when we were coming exactly, up. You know? Exactly. Exactly. Part of getting. Like when I got uh, Number of the Beast of Iron oh, Maiden. Great album. That was like a gift for, I think, like my, my, my confirmation. Yeah, that's it. I did it. my confirmation. Nice. And my mother was like, all right, we'll take it to the music store. I'm like, I want that one. She <laughs> saw the cover. She's like. Confirmation. Six, I'm like, I'm like six, it's, just, six. it's just art. It's just yeah, art. Yeah, yeah, of course. It was the first fucking song. When I went home, I blasted that. <laughs> I think it's track three, if I'm not mistaken. I, 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 think, I, I think it oh, is. Oh, wow. Dude, I don't even remember how to. Dun, 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 dun. That's how that album starts. Is it Invaders? Dude, I, I think Invaders opens that album. I can't remember. But yeah, no, it's yeah, been, yeah, it's been a while yeah, I haven't heard Iron Maiden. I think I saw all the track listing. Fuck but yeah. anyway, um, yeah. It was just looking at the album, um, discovering little things on it. You just look at the yes, cover with the headphones yes. and you're looking at, you know, and they put hidden, a lot of hidden, hidden fucking hidden, meanings like, yeah, and all these like, subliminal messages the lyrics, and stuff. The thanks list exactly. and you discover other bands from the thanks list. Exactly. Exactly. Because they're like, oh, thanks for being on tour with us. Uh, yeah, so exactly. And so band. Exactly. And we had no internet back then. So we're like buying Kerrang! magazine or Mellow Hammer oh, magazine. Oh, shit, I remember Kerrang! Watching man. Headbangers Ball. Headbangers Ball, you definitely, know, setting man. setting the timer at definitely, home. Definitely. Wake up at midnight, put the VHS in and tape that shit, you know. <laughs> exactly. I used to record shit, off you of know, it. You know, trading with yes. friends, you know. Dude, I used to, I've walked. I walked about I was young, man. I walked about 18 miles. It must have been different for you now. Oh, dude, it's crazy. I mean, it was I walked like 18 miles. Shunned upon maybe? Was it was. It? Oh, yeah, of course, man. I mean, it's it's a different culture, man. It's a different culture. They're, they're, I mean, it's frowned upon in Europe, let alone you know, like a, an Arab country or whatever, yeah, yeah, you know. Exactly. At the time. So, for for me it was, it was you got to know the right people, you got to know the guys that travel, who who the t- well, type of guys who are into this so kind of music. Sort of like bringing it in illegally. Exactly. You know? No, yeah, because back in the day, you know, I mean, there was a time where musical instruments were illegal. Like they Jesus would, yeah, Christ. dude. Like foreign instruments, like guitars, drums, anything not pertaining yeah, to the culture. That's, exactly, that hasn't got a quarter tone so on a it. Westernized, a westernized, a westernized out, instrument. instrument got burned in public. Fuck. Yeah, dude. There was, that actually happened. Like the witch hunting. Exactly. Exactly that. Are you a I witch? No, <laughs> some say. <laughs> I'm a warlock. <laughs> I'll put a spell on you. Cause <laughs> your <mind. laughs> So they would actually burn them, but then um. For me, I mean, it was it was it was pretty cool because where I grew up, there was more than one musician, okay, more than one guitarist, more than okay. one bassist, and um, and then later on, obviously, it was impossible to find a drummer. Like if you find a drummer, he oh, plays in like this. seven bands. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's, it wasn't a problem. It's crazy in a country where instruments were banned. It's exactly. a problem everywhere. everywhere. <laughs> exactly, so finding a drummer, Christ. let alone a bassist. Exactly, so you, that's the shittiest guitarist who you try to convince to grab a guitar with four strings. <laughs> It's like, listen, we got enough guitarists. Exactly. Can I interest you in a guitar with two <laughs> missing bass. strings? Exactly. Hold right. you in, bro. Hold you in. But then they become really good because most of these guys end up overachieving. Exactly. And then, and then and you're then like, they'll be like the drummer. They'll play with seven other exactly. bands as well. Exactly. That's exactly what happens. It's fucking bassist, it's, it's man. It's crazy. That's, is it? Yeah. Dude, I know. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm fucking bassist, man. <laughs> Shout out to all the bassists out there. We oh, love you, Conrad. You guys, we love you. We love you. <laughs> so moving back to that, I remember I had to walk about eighteen miles just to get British Steel, Judas Priest. Oh, fuck, dude, because that man. fucking album left a dent in me, man. That album, it's left one of a those dent. albums. Yeah, dude. There's not much going on, but the the songwriting, the the lyrics, the, all that stuff, and you know, just left a bit of a dent. It's like any like piece of art. I mean, um, I'll draw upon like certain. I had a friend who was an art major, and like pure art, I don't get. Right. Like a line cr- caught crossing through a square. Oh, right. sells for three million. Oh yeah, dude. I know exactly what you mean. To me, yeah. to the idiot stand by, by yeah, stand there, yeah. I'm like, what the fuck is that? Yeah. You know? But 
when you I spoke to a, an art major he said it's like pretty much like the music that you listen to I fucking hate he said right he said it sounds like fucking motorcycles right. revving their engines but he's shit, like shit I never thought of it that way yeah. but, but he's me, like but man. you understand that art form yes it's abstract the way that that is abstract right now he said the music you listen to to me is shit but is this a popular album? I said, yes, it is, yes. for example. I forgot what album it was. Yeah. But um, I said, yeah. I think it was like uh, Rain and Blood. Oh, right. Oh, dude, great album. And I'm like, when that came out, it blew fucking people's minds. Yes. Same as Master of Puppets. Yes. You know? He's like, well, that's the thing. He's like, it's so important to that time that the artist painted it yes. or recorded it that its history and what it holds makes it valuable. Right. The same way this to you ugly painting of two squares with a line right, going down the, the middle yes. he's like but when he painted it he blew motherfuckers minds right and that's why it's worth dude it's crazy when you mention it that way cause, cause I never thought of it that way man fuck me I mean when I heard Raining Blood I was like dude I was I rem- do you remember how do you, do you remember that what album left that big of an impression on you or should I say track that when you heard you were like what the fuck I think it was probably Black Sabbath the song by Black Sabbath Dude, you see, Sabbath to me did the same thing. That was so evil. I mean, when yeah, I heard it, that's right. Headphones, fun. and I heard it off of a, an eight track mixtape oh, that my shit. dad made. Okay, when he had his car and had an eight track player, so yeah, he used to just course. record off his LPs. Yes, which is fucking time that's consuming and tedious. I know, I know. Like nowadays, I sink my shit. Remember when I said I went to? I walked about eighteen yeah. miles for, to get that British Steel yeah. album. I went there with an empty cassette. <laughs> All right, <laughs> just to r- sit there. Record the whole thing right from A to B, and then flip the fucking thing around. All right, record the rest of the fucking side, all right, <laughs> and then leave. All right, and walk another eighteen miles. Jesus Christ, man. dude! I'm telling you, I don't think kids would do that. Nowadays. No, no, dude, they're spoiled they're like, as fuck. Is they'll probably write or leave a message on the Facebook you know page. What? Why isn't your fucking album on Spotify, you prick? Exactly. And you, and you like, Jesus dude, Christ. you don't understand. You don't, you don't, get, you don't it. get it. I mean, dude, I know. I know. But this is what's happening right now. And this is why they're so careless as young kids. Yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? Of course. And they don't, they don't give you because everything has been handed to them, been handed them on a fucking I've, golden I've met plate. people at shows. Well, not, my, not at our shows because they're a bit more, I mean, they'll know a bit more about music. But yeah. I, you know, I've met like, you know, 18 year old family members, distant cousins or whatever. Yeah. And they're like, what's a cassette? Oh, yeah, of course. What's a Walkman? Dude, I, got a, I got a buddy of I mine. I never felt so fucking <laughs> old. I'm like, Jesus Christ. It's like, it's even funny I to say knew that. what a Betamax was. Oh, yeah, or dude. an A track. Exactly. I knew what that shit was. But, it wasn't my we were time. Interested. But we were interested. Well, we were interested. You know, you know, we were it interested. made sense. You know, I could get videos off of that thing or exactly. of a VHS. You know, that shit How was does that thing dead work? dead by my time. It was already cassettes and CDs. Exactly. But when I saw an A track, I'm asking, I'm like, that's a weird fucking looking cassette. Exactly. Because that's an eight track. I'm like, what the hell's an eight track? I remember an eight track. You man. know, the first time, my first experience with an eight track was on the ferry coming to Malta, in mid mid nineties, I think it was sometime mid nineties. They were still selling that shit, dude. No, wait a second, it gets better because that ferry is so fucking old. Right? They had an eight track on like no the way. lobby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm serious. And it was playing some elevator music, Jesus and I looked at my Christ. dad. and I was like, what the fuck is that? And he goes. Oh, that's an 8-track. And I was like, holy shit. So I went there and I fucking pulled it out. And I was like, it's this fucking tape in it and so it's on. And I, was yeah, like, yeah. and I was like, it it's looks like huge, an Atari. It's fucking, a, like an Atari like, video, yeah, game. video game. But with a tape. And I was like, dude, this is awesome. And I was fascinated. And I was like, oh, shit, okay. And he goes, I think we got one at home. And I went home. Obviously, I looked for it. It didn't, didn't exist. But anyways, later on, I did my research and so on. But records was the thing that I, was, yeah, I yeah. loved. But also that fucking scratching of a fucking record. Everything, song. Everything. I mean, it's, that whole experience, it's, sitting whole, down, listening to it. It's an experience, especially when you're taking a whole album. Exactly. Which, with, with a single, you can't get. Exactly. Because nowadays, everything is it's mostly visual with, with, the, with the audio. So you need like any track. Like We always further with the idea, because obviously it's more cost effective yeah. since everything is recorded. We'll just release yeah. a single. But you can't really release a single without some accompanying video to it 100% which is what we did with the opening single i mean we it was it was a mixture between budget yep and we wanted to do a lyric video with a twist yeah and we managed to do that so we That's had awesome man i saw a live that, yeah. action sequence actress within our lyrics I loved you it. know i fucking love it and i think it. It, it's more than better just going on like ms paint or photoshop and exactly. just having lyrics splattered yeah exactly i would rather not release anything at all then do that. Then do that. So yeah, we have to work within our budget and guess something that we could do that, w- in my eyes and the rest of the guys' eyes, would pass as 
up decent. to our standard. Yeah, hundred percent, man. No, no, but no. Don't get me wrong. I love that video. Definitely. I mean, going back to that question, I I had this. I always have this conversation with old, like an old. I mean, <laughs> with old cats from the scene. It's yeah. like I still miss the, that time where I put my headphones on and a song scared me. Dude, you know songs what? songs don't really scare you. Like, for example, Black Sabbath, when Black Sabbath. It? Okay, yes, you're right. But after that, I mean, you're into the scene. You've been listening to music for years. You've heard this one band, one track, scared the living fuck out of you. Yes. What was it? That was, I think, uh, Once Upon the Cross by DSI. DSI, dude, it was the same to me, dude. It was the exact same track. I heard it, Glenn Benton's fucking vocals in it, and you're like, what the fuck, dude? I remember that. It scared the living fuck out I of me. I turned it off. <laughs> you know what? I continued listening to it because I listen to music before I go to bed. Yeah, right? exactly. So was, it, was before, around, it was around midnight. Everybody in the house has passed out. Exactly. I was listening to this shit on my own, and I'm like, and it was Once Upon the Cross by Deicide. That's dude, it, I was the same, man. That was the first time I ever heard Deicide. Oh, shit. So I got handed the cassette. Okay. And, uh, you know, at the time, your teenager, you did your homework, you did your studying, exactly. and you always look forward to before going to bed popping in an album that you got from trading from a exactly. friend you know so I gave this guy what did I give him I gave him a rise from Sepultura right. for the week and he gave me Great the aside and that was at the time when I was getting into heavy and even Sepultura right. I was like with a hot bath I was oh, easing right. into them because right. I was still coming off of Guns N' Roses and Metallica and Crew of course but, and Sabbath course. but I needed something a bit heavier yes so I was on the Master of Puppets and all that but I'm like I just need something a bit more. So someone handed me you know, Maiden. Obviously, I still love Maiden, but I'm like, yeah. I've heard you know, flirting with the idea of, her of hearing Sepultura here and there. And I think um, I think Chaos AD was just out at the time, dude, around 94. I thought, dude, I mean, Sepultura left a bit of a dent as well, man. Because oh, yeah. I played them a band. lot, man. I love I loved the whole fusion of the tribal music. and the, That whole, you know, it opened up Amazing. my eyes to like, what metal roots. could be. And I mean, Brazil, they hate roots. Oh, yeah, Lots I know. Of people I, I know, met, they I hate know, that album. Hate I know. But I don't. Get, I love that Dude, album. I love that album for again, like that argument we had for what it stood for at the time. Yes. And yes. an album is always a snapshot. It's a of, picture of the of band the at that time. One hundred percent. You know, same way Metallica during the nineties, they went a bit alternative. But you yes. know, but that was a thing also. But that's a snapshot of the band at the time. Yes, one hundred percent. That's all it is. That's it. So Sepultura, exactly. we're, we're, they're amazing thrash death band in the, in the beginning. Fuck you know, fuck me. The remains. You know, and more visions. I mean. Dude, but great they stuff. progressed, and yes. I gotta say I love all their albums. But I, I gotta say Chaos AD and Roots. Definitely, definitely it's a tough one between those two. Definitely. But man. I started. A friend handed me a rise. I'm like, all right, this is different than the. Um, yeah, it's riffs, faster riffs um, and so on. Yeah, singles yeah, that yeah, I was yeah. just hearing. I'm like, all yeah. right, this is really more the old thrash death. And yes. I was digging it. And it's faster and Because I was still into the thrash scene, you know. Overkill, Slayer, Testament, and Metallica. That was my thing yes, back then, you know. of course. So when Sepultura came in, I'm like, all right, the voice is a bit, you know. I was like 13 or 14, but I was easy yeah. into it. Then I got the cover of, you know, Deicide. I'm like, oh, shit. <laughs> yeah, dude. This I does not that. look like it's going to be light. No, dude. And no. I popped and it the, in, l- and I just... I think it was one of the first... Glenn was one of the first to actually layer vocals in death metal in that sense. Oh, yeah. oh, in that yeah. sense. Dude, like Definitely. the whole fucking high and low. The high and low together. Yeah. Oh. This is fucking crazy shit. It's like the devil in a fucking that cassette. Was, and through uh, headphones in like... With just a nightlight in your room. Yes. <laughs> and if you're still easing into that shit dude. and you're reading the lyrics... Ah, oh, dude. And that's the thing. It's like, I'm Especially jealous... for you growing I'm up kids. in a Christian house. Exactly. Yeah. You're like baptized... It's like, I'm stuff. jealous of kids. Yeah. That nowadays won't experience a song that'll scare them enough. Yes, to, to fucking, fucking take the headphones <laughs> off and just look at the cover, dude. Um, it's crazy I mean, how, I how it's the never. first. It's, how, it's, it's crazy the how it's the same thing. song. It's, it's crazy it's how it's the same song. That was that was a good one. Because because here's what happened to me. Like I was fuck me 13 14 at the time right i just started like a band trying to fucking play music you know what i mean exactly. so i wanted to do like fucking paranoid and shit you know what i mean yep. and then because i just started picking up the guitars that's why i want to start a band and fucking start playing and um there was these guys a little bit older than me like way older than me and they played they played like heavy shit yeah and i was i was wanted to be like a tough kid i was like yeah dude i fucking got this all right i walked in because i know some bands you know what i mean i'm like yeah i know these guys i know these guys you know it's because you fucking that's what you do that's what you do exactly. man as a kid and you, you just like, name drop exactly start name dropping and shit and these guys go yeah cool because we're doing slayer and shit i was like oh shit okay so now i gotta fucking up my a game right of course. I fucking really bring it on so that's what happened i walked in and uh, I started listening to a bunch of stuff off of Slayer. And then this guy fucking drops 
this D side album amongst the cassettes. He was like, listen to this, it will help you. And I was like, holy fuck. So I was listening to that shit religiously, right? Like all the fucking Slayer, all the Testament, all the Metallica, all that stuff. I mean, I was into some Metallica songs, some albums. Yeah. Like till this day, Ride the Lightning, in my opinion, is probably one of the best albums ever written. That's that's a tough choice. That's Dude, a tough, I will know. go for Master, obviously. Yeah, but fair I think close second will be Ride the Lightning. Definitely, eh? bro. Definitely. I would. I yeah. I'll put in second. You I put will in put se- in second. I'd put Ride the Lightning in second. Fair enough, but that's a matter of taste. It is. It is a matter is. of taste because to me, I mean, there's a few riffs in Ride the Lightning that I think are course, fucking ridiculous, man. I still think like uh, Call of Cthulhu is on that. Man. Dude, exactly. Creeping Death. That's it. Exactly. I mean, fucking even fight fire with fire. Come on. Ride the lightning itself. <sighs> Ride yeah. the lightning itself. You exactly. Know? So, so for me, it was. I was excited getting into that sort of stuff, and then. I, I would never fucking forget this, man. I would never forget. I was I was laying in bed, and I, my bed was was to get into my room. So it was on the side, and I had I had this window. And every night, like if it's a creepy night, like the moon's on the side, so I get a bit of light Very coming nice. in. Yes. and I'll turn off the lights. You know what I mean? And I, just no, moonlight. Just moonlight, because it's more than nice. enough, right? Yeah. And then I have my headset on because my parents get annoyed after a while. So I'd like fucking have my headset on. I'll, and I threw this cassette into my Walkman. Right. Sony walk was it, it yellow? Sony. No, okay. it was great. It was, it was great. great. It was great with the, with a bass booster on the side. <laughs> remember that shit? I had the yellow one. It was like a waterproof one. Oh yes, I remember that with lid. a seal. Yeah, oh, everything got a seal God, on it. I remember it was that so shit. Embarrassing. That's yeah. bright yellow Walkman. <laughs> Dude, you know what? They're fucking great inventions. All right, they are. Do you remember, what did you do when the batteries died? You bite them. You ever tried that we, shit? No, we put them in the fridge overnight. We put them in the fridge overnight. <laughs> yes, we did that shit as well. <laughs> oh, you bite them on the side and fucking put them back. I still do it, dude. I'm old school, man. <laughs> I will not throw them out. I'll put that fucker in the no, fridge dude, overnight. No, put that shit in the fridge. And I might lick a 9-volt battery every now and then just to make sure we still got juice in it. <laughs> I saw a great prank recently. This guy with a 9-volt battery walked up to his girlfriend as she was sleeping. She had a septum piercing. He just fucking connected it. Brilliant. Brilliant. I was talking to a genius, man. That's like, that was genius. That's like, um, like how to kickstart a millennial or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like... Oh yeah, exactly. How to job start a millennial? Hook it up to a septum. Exactly. Hook it up to an AC Delco. There you go, honey. <laughs> there it is. Your wake up call. Exactly. No man. So yeah, back to that. Uh, and I, I remember fucking just hitting play. And I think once upon the cross, and how it starts is once upon the cross, and you're like, holy fuck! It hit me like a fucking ton like, of bricks. It hit me like a ton of bricks. And it's, I was like, it was like a combination of the vibe and you know, like most bands in that genre. But it's it's a combination of the vibe. I mean, that song and album is fucking yeah. evil. It's evil. There's no other fucking way. And yeah, kudos true. to them because they fucking managed. And that Definitely. was a time when. You know, late eighties, early nineties, mid nineties, when that scene of death metal was really coming to fruition, exactly. and the bands were really putting out some of their best fucking work, and it was it was still relatively new as yeah. well as a style. That's true, and it really made such an impact. That's true, man. You know, those That's bands, so true. all from I mean, the death metal scene. Now, I wasn't a huge follower of that scene. I was still more stuck, and I stayed on the thrash. I was a huge thrash know. kid for a long time, but then I got into ma- I got into death metal because of a, a, a band member okay and he was a great songwriter and uh, shout out to salah if you're if you're out there bro i mean keep doing what you're doing you're fucking awesome and i love you to bits and i hope you come visit me soon um so this guy got into death proper like the band yeah and he was like a huge fucking fan of chuck and he, he is he did that you know he was following him religiously and you know he's just dumping music on me every single time he got uh a cassette in from abroad or whatever course, you know yeah. what i mean or you got a recording of somewhere you know and you just fucking drop it on and he's like i never understood it till i got older for some reason till i got about let's say 24 25 Makes sense. and that's when everything started making sense to me i mean don't get me wrong i love the music i love the riffs i love oh, the yeah. way they wrote but it was jazz to me because coming from thrash yeah, it was jazz was you know I what got i mean to death probably later yeah same here I probably was in my early 30s, really? late 20s, when oh, I got right. into death. Because then I could finally start to appreciate them more. Exactly. Because at that time, it was a bit too much for me. Yeah, not for enough. It was a bit beyond. Exactly. But when you look back, you're like, they were fucking really ahead of his Dude, time. Chuck was really way ahead, ahead of his time. time. Way ahead now, of his time. Now I can listen to it. You know? Yes. And the cynic as well. The, the atheists, because they were all exa- from the same exactly. cut. Exactly. The from the same cloth. Exactly. From the same cloth. That Florida scene, yeah. Pushing the, the thrash death into progressive... And jazz leanings, yes, you know. Yes, dude. But when you're 
at least me as a teenager, I don't want to have anything to do with that. Exactly. What the fuck is this shit? Exactly. Where's the four fours? Where's the exactly. fucking me? You know? I want to play. I want to fucking jam. I want to rock out. By that time, I was already, you know, the new metal was coming around. Yes. Actually, it started with Rage Against the Machine and Faith No More. How did that go for you? That was still, I think, one of... I don't know if it's just crying nostalgia, but, you know, because everybody sees everything with roast in their glasses. Of course. But that was, like, my upcoming years. What shaped me was when really new metal hit. Right. That was around 92. So you had Rage Against the Machine drop their debut. Right. Which fucking blew everyone's mind. Of course. Then you had the underground bands like Stuck Mojo. Yes. Which were one of the first sort of, as well, rap rock hybrids. And they were four rednecks with black men rapping for them from the fucking south 100% and they were knocking down fucking doors with that and they were more on the metallicized side do you remember who caught on to that around that same era around that same time well there was a lot of bands Anthrax 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 with Public Enemy they are like we gotta do something about this I mean you had had Aerosmith and Run DMC oh yeah of course but they were doing the rock that was for the mainstream that was was for the mainstream Public Enemy and Anthrax exactly so I think you could credit that whole kicking down of the door with Public Enemy and Anthrax definitely I still think you had faith no more with Angel oh, Dust. Oh, of course. With Epic. Of course, man. And they didn't even realize they were doing it. Yeah, they didn't know it was happening. They till, didn't know. Yeah, it was, exactly. And then you had, uh, I think it was 94, Korn's debut dropped. Was it 94? Was it 94? I had no idea. I, 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 don't, was I was never into that scene. Okay. I yeah, it ne- was 94. They had I know one, tr- one song, Something Ladders, which I love because it's got like Shoots fucking nursery. Ladders. Shoots and Ladders. That's so it had like nursery that rhymes. That was 94. Yeah. That was 94. See, that's, that's the only track I loved Okay, because I thought it was genius. Yeah. The way the, the whole thing was just. That was, it was yeah. freaky. It was, yeah. I still uh, think their debut is still one of their best though. I don't, I, I agree. If that's what was off of their I mean, I lost interest as the years went by, but they got, as the bigger they got, they became more polished. Yes. You know, obviously, they would get a bit more comfy and the edges lost, but the debut yes. was so fucking raw. I agree. And there was nothing like it at the time. Yes. Because when that came around, I think we had Chaos AD, we had um, Davidian from, uh, I'm sorry, Burn My Eyes yes. from Machine Head, yes. we had the manufacturer, I think, or was it Soul of a New Machine of Fear Factory? Yeah. Everything was still a bit very metallic. Yes. And uh, Metal uh, as we know but that's it. That's also like the industrial influence coming in as of well. Course, like Nine Inch Nails, probably, yeah, exactly, Ministry at the time. Exactly. And, that, and that, that was like fucking, because it was mainstream exactly. at the time. This and that was such a great mishmash and such a creative but the, era. Then, then grunge came along. Yeah, but yeah. I love the grunge era. I Dude, mean, I know. You know I, I, I love it too. Everyone no, knows exactly. that I love the grunge no, era. No, I love grunge, man. Don't get Which me wrong. Th- I think from grunge and even probably pop rock or whatever, all the way down to the underground, the 90s was such a bud. Yeah. A c- creativity. That's so true. I mean, that is so true. I couldn't listen to Oasis back then. Now, I don't mind it. I'll look back. I'm like, that's a pretty decent song for exactly. songwriters. You don't gig playing covers, do you? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. I can't do it anymore. I can't and I won't. Exactly. No, I can't fucking play Wonderwall anymore, man. <laughs> Honestly, I can't. I can't. The thing is, I don't even know how to play it. Good. I, I will get asked so many times like to come up and jam um, a, yeah, a popular song. Yeah. And they're actually surprised. I mean, playing guitar for like 25 years when I tell oh, them... Sure, we lost the camera there for a second, we and we're the back. I don't know what we were talking about. Um, yeah, Wonderwall, never again. No, no, yeah, I, I, I don't even know how to play what, that What's shit. your go-to when you pick up a guitar? What's your go-to song? It's none of anybody's. All right. I you're, just you're, fuck you're, around. Noodle? I, most of the riffs that I keep for the bands mm-hmm. are the ones while I'm warming up. Oh, right, okay. Because once I'm warmed up, I'll go through our shit. Yeah, I'll go exactly. through our set. I'm warmed up. I could do it. Yeah. I, have, I have a set list to go through. If I'm going on tour, I have of to course. go according to that. But while I'm warming up, There's the, that's where this magic happens. That's where it is. Or even at the room, if it's not like by myself in my room, if we meet up at the rehearsal room, well, everyone just warms up. The drummer's hitting some shit. Everyone's finding levels. Of course, that's most of the time when we find the riff for the exactly. song. Exactly, exactly. And then something clicks, and then you want something to something clicks. Yeah, he'll for join sure. in, and he'll exactly. join in, and that that's it. It becomes a song, right? That or even after drinking session. Oh yeah, dude. That that you try and go helps. to sleep. You close your eyes, and you just hear something. That happens to you as well, dude. I wake up and I record that yeah, shit. Yeah, you gotta hum that shit. Yeah, you're not gonna say plug yeah, in yeah, shit. And no, record no, no. It. I sometimes wake up to plug it in because I know I, yeah, I know I could, exactly I how exactly. I want it to sound. You know what I mean? And you have to and I, exactly. You not, you'll be like, oh, I'll remember it in the morning. You know what happens to me sometimes? Like I write something, like or I hum it into like the phone, yeah, yeah. And, which is the greatest invention ever, by the way. I love it. Yeah, dude. But then, but then you, you forget how it sounded because exactly. because if you don't get the right tone, to me, it just goes no, away. No, if you, you sing it a different pitch or anything, you got to fucking. Exactly. And it loses the magic. I'll be like, 
so I have, usually have my phone next to me. Yeah. But if I leave it on charge away from me, and I'll get that, I'm like, Fuck. I couldn't be fucked to get out of bed. But I'm like, I'll repeat it when yeah. my eyes close. I'm like, four hours, I'll wake up. I'll remember it. No. You wake up. It's gone. You're doing your thing. You're taking a piss. And you're just staring. And you're like, fuck, what the hell was it's it? It's gone. It's I gone. Know. So I know. the humming... Fucking does the job. It's true. Constantly. I mean, you can, you can hear some of the vo- uh, the messages from between us with the band and stuff. Even you know, us. exactly. Even it's us. Like, Dude, I come up with this fucking. Song. It goes. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. You know what I mean? But the best exactly. thing to do if you hum it, yeah, then record it on guitar. Oh yes, exactly. No, I record it on guitar because I do it to the that. others. Where I have Brendan coming to me like yeah. with a vocal melody, and it's just humming. Right. And I'm like, I don't get it. I'm sorry. Exactly. I'm sure in your head it's making perfect it sense. sense. Exactly. The way mine to me sounds like it's filling up fucking stadiums. But yes. listen. Yes. Record your bit and bring it to me because exactly. I'm hearing mm-hmm, you know, mm-hmm, like, you know, exactly. It's like a so it goes Zeppelin so, record. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's all I'm hearing. I'm not hearing no <laughs> fucking melody. <laughs> 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 Shit, man, it's crazy. How you grow up in different parts of the world and you know and, and end up and, experiencing and, and, exactly. a lot of the same stuff, man. It's, it's a, a satanic band open. from Florida is yeah. our common ground. <laughs> exactly, dude. Fuck me. Shit, dude. It's crazy. It is fucking nuts. What but was your first guitar, though? My first guitar. I still have it. You're my joking. first electric guitar. Well, actually, my first guitar was some shitty Spanish guitar. Same here. Because uh, yeah. I wanted to learn, obviously. Exactly. At the time, I was like, Flair! You yeah, know, I exactly. went up to my tutor. I'm like, I want to be fucking Kirk Hammond and reincarnate, <laughs> you know? He's like, all right. Easy <laughs> cowboy. He's like, yeah. I don't even know how to fucking hold it yet. The thing is, I'm a lefty, but I kept holding it as a right. And we just stayed with it. You did mention to me that you're a lefty yeah, earlier. But I play right handed. You play right handed. Which actually now that I sort of, I think I know how to play the instrument, um, it works to my advantage because most of my strength is in my left hand. Right. Which means exactly. my, my fingering on the fretboard. <laughs> Ladies, is, you hear that? His fingering. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty tight. It's pretty tight. <laughs> it works. It works. Yeah. So I got really good control. That's crazy, man. That. Yeah, because I, I've noticed you're bending and stuff. I mean, fuck me. You, you're fucking playing but on Zach point, Wild bro. is a huge influence. I could and imagine. He, will bend, he could bend the fucking coil off of a 4x4, <laughs> four four, I'm sure. Exactly. You know? yeah. like, exactly. It. Give it. I'm going to exactly. fucking pitch harmonic your coil, you know? <laughs> Dude, it's massive. Anyway. It's fucking ridiculous. I saw them live in Sofia, and I was probably second row. And this fucker stands on a this like a little podium thing. Yeah, dude, it's fucking crazy, man. He's got this <laughs> whole like fan hitting him. Chain exactly as a fucking mic microphone stand. stand. Exactly. No, dude's fucking huge, dude, man. Dude, and he's he massive. looks like a like like a and he did, he, like a chick dude. when he started with Ozzy, you know. Yeah, but he then like he a, started doing a human growth hormone, girl. and then he started human growth I, hormone, and that's that when that Ozzy was like, "Yeah, dude, he's doing everything, bro." And that's why Ozzy. He kicked him out of the band, and he goes, "You, you know think what? It's for that? Yeah, he he said it in an interview. Really? Yeah, dude. Yeah. He's like, as soon as the human growth hormone kicked in, that's when Ozzy had to draw the line. And Damn, man. Well, yeah. I'm sure it fucks with your attitude. Of course, it some does, man. Aspect. Of course, it does. But that's how he got huge. And then, dude, Matt, I saw him like probably like nine years ago, or no, seven years ago in yeah. Florida." I'm like, this fucking massive. He's massive. About six, seven years ago, he was huge. Like, yeah, two, I saw him about I saw him about three, four years ago, something like that, okay. and he was all right. He was. Yeah, a, I mean, he was. He, he was still fucking muscly bit, and shit. But, but at the peak of that shit, like at the peak he of was that, still I with Ozzy like, when I saw him. Remember that shit with like 2004, 2005 when. Uh, when that whole Alexi Laiho movement happened with yeah, Children yeah, of Bodom yeah. and stuff, because he was popular, he just released the Mafia album of at the course, time, right? Of that's course, a, yeah, exactly. Yeah, and was, that photo shoots where you could see how massive. big he was, man. Massive. Fuck me, Fucking yeah. Massive. I mean, you notice how massive. Because I mean, even like a flying V, I have a flying V, and I only bought it because it's borderline. I don't look ridiculous with a flying V. Dude, you look great. Because thank you. Flying v. <laughs> no, <laughs> thank honestly, you, I've seen it. Thank you. But you know, with that kind of guitar, you have to be a certain build and height for it to work. Yes. And you 100%. really can't be anything below that threshold. Ratio, ratio. Look There's like, like a guitar to human there size is, ratio. There is. It is. It is true. Because you look like a twelve I mean, year old. It's like if you look at Angus Young with his SG. Oh, to me, it always was a little bit too small for the SG. And Angus is a small guy. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. And He's a little bit too small. Massive. Large on it him. is now, big on him. SG is a small guitar. A guitar. Exactly. Now it's like <laughs> a less Paul crazy. Or I never v. fucking thought of that. Exactly. I never fucking Dude, thought of that. I, I, I overthink a lot of. Dude, it's crazy. What people think are useless shit. <laughs> to me, they're really important. Makes sense. To me, they're really important. Yep. Especially shit like this. So I like, like measure my measurements and measure the guitar, the point of a V to the top of the headstock just to make fucking sure. Yeah, dude. Then I look in the mirror. What was the ratio? 
I don't remember. I was drunk when I did it. <laughs> it's, it's like, I'm going like to buy it, I'm going to buy it. And yeah. I'm like, let me just take another measurement. You know? <laughs> 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 What's the size of the broom? All right, here exactly. we go. Yeah, take photos in front so of the mirror. Like, I'm like, this with a tape measure in front of the mirror. Because I didn't have it where I used to work. Right? We didn't have a V at the time. <laughs> so I'm like, fuck it. So I'm like, that looks about right. Yeah, this looks about, yeah, I'll pull it off. And you did, man. Thank you did you. fucking pull Thank it you. off. It's one of my favorite guitars. Not sitting so down. That, so your first guitar was a Spanish guitar. The Spanish guitar then that my tutor made me learn how to learn finger the on. basics, yeah. learn to yeah. finger on, yeah. get your finger up, yeah. uh, get you know, get your get finger your grip going, get the grip going. <laughs> then uh, he, we started doing theory, and I still to this day I tell everyone I don't know a lick of theory. I don't know shit. Yeah, fair enough. I know from muscle memory over the years what each fret, what each semitone will give me, darker, brighter. Yep. And that's how I like, roll. Fuck that that's major, how I minor roll. Shit. So yeah. people come up to me like, oh, that solo, you're doing like a, a diminished seven. I'm like, the fuck out of here. No I, like, I have clue. no idea what you're telling me right now. Uh, I know what you mean. That's why sometimes the jam, I, I would love to jam, but the thing is with jams, like, oh, all right, we're going to do a key of C and we're going to, you know, in the midsection, we're going to go to a G. It means absolutely fucking nothing to me. <laughs> exactly. You could have told me you're wearing your wife's underwear. <laughs> At that point, I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about, you know? I know so the feeling. It, I'll take four bars to like, feel it and hear the tone. If you tone. say G to me, there's a third fret on the E. That's, that's it. How I that's know it. That's exactly. How I know it. Or else I'll just get a feeling for for the tone. Oh yeah, of course. Because I work in tones. Of course, man. And so that's the best they'll way to start do it. jamming. And and I'll the hear the tone. Is it somber? Is it upbeat? And exactly. I'll know where I have to be on the neck. But you're lucky because you managed to build that ear. A lot of guitarists don't no, get to fucking build that ear I, I because know, of. I know people who said they only study theory. Yeah. To and they say, I can't really get the feel down or yes. the passion through because yes. they're so busy sight reading. Exactly. Or sight thinking reading. inside the box. That's it. And thinking. You know? That's the whole thing. Like it's, it's like when we write, we're like, hit that note. Yeah. Like technically in the world of theory, yes. it's not supposed to be in the scale. Mm, yes. But I really don't fucking care. I don't give a shit. Because if yeah. it sounds dissonant, if it sounds right. Yes. It will I do the job. I don't give a fuck. Exactly. I don't give a fuck. Will, I mean, if you listen to death, half of those fucking scales don't make sense. They don't make sense. Exactly. exactly. You know it, works mean? They don't, the but it works for the context. It works for the exactly. description of the feeling that you're exactly. trying to portray now, through that. if you that. take one of like death's riffs or licks. Yeah. And you just play it on a different key on a piano it will not make sense no dude it's all about it's context a, exactly it's or on paper exactly so like you're not supposed to put timing. a D sharp there and timing and timing, timing plays a it big could be a role. weird timing for that yes, scale to work sca- exactly and Exa- that's it's, it's all of that, that it's not all, just it's not just exactly no it's fitting in the scale it's crazy you say that but there's your theory right there and, this is, and some people will go to school for that shit. Yeah. You know what I mean? No, but, no, I know. You know, honestly. I mean, I'm not knocking them because I, I would. Oh, hell no. Don't get I me wrong. No, no, no. No, no. Mad, mad respect. Mad respect. Mad respect. Because I had friends who tried to explain it to me. Yeah. And I have such ADD when it comes to this. And uh, I'll try even at home. Yeah. And I'm there with the guitar. Trying to learn your scale and modes and shit. Learning a basic <laughs> mode. And after five minutes, I'm like, get the fuck out exactly, of here. Exactly, man. man. Let me, I just yeah. fucking rock out, man. I want to exactly. play. I exactly. I just want to fucking riff out. Exactly. And to find the solo, I will fucking make 20 million mistakes yeah, until 100%. I find what I have to do. Exactly. But that's how it is. Exactly. No, 100%. But that's why you guys sound the way you sound, I guess. Because if you're overthinking your shit, yeah. like, for example, I, I, I saw Dream Theater recently yeah. live. All right? I'm not knocking them. They're a great band, fucking amazing musicians. They're amazing musicians. No, no, don't get me wrong. They're fucking ridiculous musicians. Yeah, that's right? the word. They're ridiculous. Yeah, they're ridiculous. Did I enjoy it, though? I kept asking myself that question. Like, well, I love listening did, to the if music. If you kept asking yourself that question, it means you yeah, didn't. I didn't. Because it wouldn't even be a question. Exactly. But I would go and check out, you know, your opening band... And if they're fucking rocking out and they're having a good I know. time, I know. that's all that fucking matters to me. Because I'll be I in know. the mosh pit. Like, I went and saw... Uh, shout out to BNI out there, man. Oh, dude, fucking... Dude, gr- that's a band that I love that's a seeing. Live band. That's, that's a live, a live band. experience Exactly. Band, I you know? love watching these guys you know, live. Exactly. Dude, I love... And I enjoy was, it. There's so many, like, even, like, um, like, like let's say, internationally well-known bands. Yeah. I, I went to a show and it was High on Fire. Right. Which are a very heavier, sleazier, like Motorhead influenced yes. band. We're opening for Opeth. Okay. Which at the time had, I think it was um, Ghost Reveries was out. Of course. Which is a great album. If I got the. I think it's that. I think so. Yeah. Um, super tight band. We need more beer, don't we? I think we do. We do. All right, let's pause this here. Let's pause this. What are we talking about? Um, live bands. Live bands. Get okay, some more beer. <laughs> Yeah. Cheers. We are back. We are back. With our non-alcoholic beer. Hell yeah. Let's see. 
I could probably see that it's not alcoholic. Yeah, because the bag's forming under my eye. <laughs> <laughs> it's Get not big. alcoholic. <laughs> what are you talking about? Not at all. Yeah, we're, good. we're not addicted to any substances. Mm-mm. No, definitely. Not at all. So, yeah, speaking of live bands. So, uh, yeah, I think as we were talking about how, like, sometimes not being the greatest musician but having the great songs and yes. vibe on stage will trump. Because yes. I saw... High on Fire, which it was like a mismatched bill, but I love it. I love bills like that. High on Fire opening for Opeth. High on Fire, sleazy as fuck. Yeah. Loose. But they were fucking loud, man. They got fucking Everyone, walls of orange jams. Yeah, of course. And that's... It gave me a certain emotion. You use orange jams, don't you? I use orange jams, man. I oh, love them. Me, I'm waiting man. for my sponsorship now that I mentioned them. <laughs> 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 orange, but if you listen in, be, you know what to yeah, do. You, Hopefully, come to play vintage. We should be having them soon. So yeah, exactly. That's I'll awesome, get them. Man. I'll get them in my life one way or another. <laughs> so if not going to sponsor awesome. me, at least I might be able to have them. That, you know, that is awesome. At man. my disposal to sell them to other cats. <laughs> Show them the beauty of the citrus. Oh, uh, look at you! That's <laughs> awesome, man. No, that's fucking great. Because one, no, one way or another, one way or another, one way or another, one way or another, bro. It got to happen. No, man. I gave up on sponsorships at this point. Uh, nowadays it's completely different I mean a sponsorship Definitely. nowadays unless you're you know selling out stadiums exactly would mean that you get you know like wholesale price exactly and your name on the website for bragging that's rights that's crazy that's man. pretty much what yeah, endorsements exactly. are nowadays that's crazy man and I know I saw some th- of these contracts and I'm talking I mean you know but the thing is like I should stop drinking and not touch on this subject no it's fine of man. local no, stuff no, but I've been in the local scene but there's a lot of great fucking talented, talented artists, artists. and musicians, especially in the underground. Because as we all know, yes. it's not because I'm biased, but the, I mean, apart from Joseph Kalea, because people are gonna nah, Joseph Kalea is mm-hmm. one of the best in his in his genre. Yes, musical exports yes, that Malta has ever had. You know? Yes, 100. percent We have Mark Sirachi, who obviously fronts Crocus. Right. Amazing. Oh yes, export. of course. Yes. But let's say like Joseph Kalea to me, because he still lives here. Yes. I still think he's one of the best musical exports this country will, will ever have, at least for now. Okay. Now, we got that out of the way yeah. for technicality's sake. When it comes to I love you. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> so diplomatic. I love it, man. You should have been a politician. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Cheers. Yeah, cheers. Yes, now that we got that out of the now way. Now we got that out of the way, yep. let's sort of bypass the pop scene. Cause, because. That's it. Because. Because. Yeah, I mean, no, I their contribution you. outside of these shores has been minimal to nil. True. Okay. The metal scene, though, the on underground, the underground scene, scene here, scene be in it from metal to, to hip hop um, as well, hip hop now, yeah. especially lately, punk bands, yes, the alternative bands. I mean, I can mention bands like you know, um, from like the punk and you know, underground like Bila, who have been on the U.S. tours. Yes, tour. yes, yes. They've been like the Bean Growers. Yes. I mean, um, but even you got other bands. Like, I mean, have you ever listened to like the world music stuff? You know, like, the yeah, Tribali, Tribali oh, got the of course. Uh, um, uh, well, Manu my, Tapu. my business partner plays with Tribali. No way, of man! That's awesome. Tribali. What about Manu Tapu? As well, I love as those well. guys. That's, speaking of a live band, exactly. That's another speaking live band. Speaking of a live band, you have especially the world music influence. Yes, because I gloss. Thank you for reminding me. Because they hit a nerve with oh, the definitely. mainstream oh, and the underground. Because I know everybody oh, loves. Definitely. Because everybody, no matter what, loves a good night out with a live band. Exactly. You know. And if you get and good a Maltese vibe. pop band is really not going to give me that. No, but if, I'm like Manatapu Tribali, they will give me that yes. live band feeling that I want. Yeah. And, and they'll give the nice melodies for the people who just want melodies exactly. and the live feel. Exactly. And they really struck a chord here and abroad. I so kudos to them because they're not conforming to any respect. pop structure either. Exactly. No, fuck that. So no. definitely, like I said, so we glossed over the pop because, like I said, it just caters to what is local here. Yeah, That's yeah. the way I see it. No, 100%, man. And the, like I said. So speaking of live bands, what, what band actually left a dent with you that you've seen live recently or, or ever, should, for that matter? It's a good question. Damn it. I know there's so many of them. Because there was Motley Crue, obviously, because I'm a crew. You saw, you saw Motley Crue? Yes. Oh, the Saints of Los Angeles tour. Vinny was in shape or not? Uh, tour. What, what year? There were backing tracks. Let's just say what year? 2009. Oh, shit. Okay, so, okay. So, there were backing tracks yes, towards the they end. Yes, got stems at the, all yes. that going on, yeah. Um, I mean, Metallica, but dude. dude. You saw Metallica? I saw, that was a great build. That was I'm Lamb jealous, of God, man. Gojira, and Metallica. Fuck off. Dude, I, mean, I was supposed to be at Hellfest this year. Exactly. And I, that Those got are canceled. always the great. I know, man. I've, I know. Believe it or not, I've never been to a festival apart from Ozfest 2000. 
I'll tell you a story off camera. Okay. <laughs> All right, off camera. The best <laughs> How ones. we ended up in Vakken. <laughs> Forget it. I'll tell you that later. But I was supposed to be at Hellfest this year because um, uh, a buddy of mine, uh, we managed to get tickets and so on, and we nice. were supposed to go together. Shout out to Mo. And we were supposed to go to, um, uh, to Hellfest. COVID hit. And we were like, what the fuck are we going to do now? What's, what's, and then obviously health is going crazy. They're like, exactly. The management is like, what the fuck are we going to do? They're like, you know what? Let's move everything to next year. Yeah. Keep your tickets. And okay. we, you guys could show up next year. Good. Which is great for us. So Of course. I think the lineup will be the That's same. That's always a great lineup. Dude. Always. Deep Purple. Hopefully nobody dies. I mean, there's I bands know. like Deep Purple on and shit. You know, you're like, I, know. You're like, I don't know if they'll live till next I know. year. I know. But That's yeah. the thing. But. Purple were here. I don't think you were here in Malta. No, I went dude. to see them. When they were here in 95, if I'm not uh, mistaken. Oh, fuck me. No, I wasn't here, man. I was, yeah. That was a good year. We had Sabbath come by, but it was Sabbath with Tony Martin. I think. See, I love that era. It was okay. It was okay. No, it was yes, okay. it was okay. Obviously, he was it's gonna odd. Be, oh, he it's was gonna odd. Be Ozzy, Dio for me. I know people are going to say you're crazy because it's always going to be love Dio, Dio for I, I love, love Dio. Dio. But I for love Sabbath, Dio. to me, it's Ozzy. I, Ozzy. I know. Don't get me wrong. Ozzy, Dio. Masters of Reality album is what got me into metal and that music in general. the first Black Sabbath album that I. I found in my father's and Ozzy, same here. The, I don't, the, the, the whole it's fucking purple man. and white Everything, and man. black. It, it's just for me. It was like so that to yeah, me, dude. and that's the thing where it may not be. Some may argue it's not their best album, but it's what it means to you exactly when you discovered it at that point in time in your life. Amen. Is what makes it one hundred percent, bro. One hundred percent. That was the same thing with me, man. It's because uh, Masters Reality is what got me into music in general. Yeah, and then. Goes, yeah. And that's why I want to fucking play guitar and fucking do shit. You know what I mean? And travel and stuff. And it opened up my eyes. And I was a very pissed off kid. Again, I was a, I was an angry kid um, internally. I wasn't yeah. like I wasn't like releasing it out internally. I was a very yeah, pissed you off kid. Like a, a delinquent. You no, know what I mean? wasn't. But no, no. Internally, you felt that exactly. fire. And exactly. You needed someone and I didn't music take it to release. To release it. exactly. And and when when I heard, for example, as I said, you know, Children of the Grave and so on, it, it just spoke my language. And then later on going off to uh, discovering more Sabbath music that's when I discovered Dio and I was like shit man but then I knew more about music by then and I was like oh shit this guy could actually fucking sing I mean Ozzy obviously can sing but Dio has a certain range Dio, I mean, you hear man. him with Rainbow of course man you hear him with Rainbow and all that stuff but then uh, Computer God or uh, the Humanizer the album Humanizer the Humanizer and then you have that track Computer God on, and for me it was like no, no, that's blew the thing. my fucking it's, brains out, man. That was, it was fucking amazing. I think there were certain eras. I dare say, I doubt we will have full circle of because you get full circle of many genres. You know, you get hip hop coming back, you get synth wave coming back. Uh, you know what, what? We could do without mm. a lot. Have you ever heard of crab core? <laughs> Dude, it's like that shit could. I mean, it'll the be great. Will never come back. I hope so. I was never. I fucking hope so. I will dwell lightly on it, but crab core and. The genre surrounding it. Now, usually I'm very open minded, especially when it comes to the underground, but I saw no redeeming value in right. any of that kind of style. Definitely. That crab core, Definitely. that Definitely. other cores Worthless. around it. It was just, there was no substance at all. <laughs> yes. Now, some would argue that new metal was like that, but when you come to think about it, it left a huge mark, new oh, metal. And it's man. still being heard on most bands. And it influenced most bands. Sepultura was one of them. Yes, 100%. Especially they went fusing. From Chaos AD and yeah. fusing the new metal sound. Yes. Anthrax did it with Volume 8. Yes, they did. Do you Speaking know? of which, Epic Band Live. Anthrax, I have to Dude, see. Because I saw them. That's one I, of the few bands I haven't seen. Because I saw them with Slayer. Shit. Dude, I saw them because we were touring together. I think it was five years ago, last time I saw them. Was, and you just mentioned Slayer. I think that was one of the gigs. Since I don't do festivals, I prefer the, the intimacy of a one night thing. Same here. And I think that was one of the bills that I saw when we were on tour. We had an off night from tour in Birmingham. That was in 2003, 2004. Nice. And it was, the bill was Mastodon, Hatebreed, Slayer, Slipknot. Fuck me, dude. And Mastodon is, only had, names, man. Uh, I think, the first album out. Oh, yet. shit. Yeah, by then. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, so they opened. Fuck me, man. They had no live show. Mastodon today, bro. Yeah. yeah, dude. And I was already a fan. Oh, I heard course. March of the Fire Ants and I was already a fan. Oh shit! That was okay, the first yes. track I heard of them. All right, no, because I, I was never into them. That I wasn't because I I don't know why, but I was just never gave them a chance. There's you lots know, of there's people because they 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 progress a lot from album to album. Yes, 
And which the, is the, why and those jumps is just like you go really you guys I mean I heard you and I you know you fall in love with one track on, on like an on early one album. album and then the you're other like album will sound exactly AOR, like journey, totally like, fucking different you know I think what I mean? you really have to do it um, with with a band like Mastodon you really have to do it in succession yeah and probably. hear the progress yes you can't really jump from the latest and go to the first album yes completely different band yes. Especially the drumming. The drumming was non-stop on the first album. A roll, just from beginning to end. Yeah. <laughs> now he tamed it down. But you know the drummer writes the riffs for that band. You're joking. Yeah. Fuck, I never knew that. No, man, that's crazy. He writes the riffs also. Dude, At least he I, did back, back in, in the, the early band. days. Now that drummer is just crazy on the so first album. So he carried the whole band. Yeah. Fuck, man. I mean, he's obsessed with... I mean, his old drum kit is um, Randy Rhodes. Yes. yes. He's yes. obsessed with Randy Rhodes. Yes. The drummer is obsessed with Randy Rhodes, you know? Yeah, because we had the polkas on it and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, Buddy Guy and Randy Rhodes, yeah, I think, are the only two that, that have polkas. the, the yeah. polka. Yeah, dude. I remember that. Because speaking of Randy Rhodes, you remind me a lot of Randy Rhodes playing. Okay. No, I'm serious. <laughs> no, I'm serious. Especially your solos. No, I'm serious. It could be. You know why it makes sense? Yes. Because... I would say I'm more influenced from Zach Wild. Right, but, but Zach, Zach Wild, Wild was influenced, influenced from by Randy, Randy Rhodes. Rhodes. So yes. I'm getting secondhand smoke. Yes, you know dude, I mean? no, 100 percent, man. Which makes sense. Dude, you said that. Actually. But you're articulate. Zach isn't yes. articulate because he, obviously it's because of the tone and so on. Yeah, I'm not yeah. going to go into that. But yeah, articulation in that sense it, with you, man. I mean, I, dude, you, you you blow me away every single Thank time you. I watch you play. No, I'm serious. Thank you. And um, I'm uh, humble. I'm actually no, blushing. On Oh, stop it. Oh, stop. stop. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, dude. Fuck me, man. Mad respect. And thanks Thank for coming you. out, man. Dude, anything uh, released soon that you want to shout out or uh, plug in? By all means. Yes. The camera is yours. Camera. So, play vintage, brand new, vintage, new guitar, bass, stringed instrument boutique. That's in Nashar, opening first week of August. You will see my ugly mug behind the counter. And my partner, Andrew, um, people know him from Trabali, he's Trabali's guitarist, so we had a little, you know, little powwow together, and That's awesome. it is what it is, and we're going to try and shake shit up that when it comes awesome, to instrument man. sales I'll here. I'll definitely pass by, and I will and, you know, probably it's, it's, be picking up. It's a up. passion also, you know, it's like, my age is my age, whatever it is, only people know that, and it's like, now is the fucking time to do something on my own, Exactly. you know, the music shit is doing pretty well. Yes. And I think now is the time, you know. Dude, I'm at that I'm point so in my life where I to have hear. to. I'm so happy to hear. Uh, I wish you all the success in the world Thank with the new you, project, man. man. Honestly. You. And uh, you're more than welcome to come back whenever you want I to will, podcast, man. man. And will. if I you will. want to. It's been a pleasure, so, man. Uh, it's been dude, a pleasure. Dude, it's been great catching up. And man. I don't think. I don't does it show that I'm like half drunk? No, I I'm, I'm, I'm hammered. Half drunk. You're not hammered. No, you're no, ha- no, I'm not I, I am. Dude, I wasn't even talking about you. <laughs> talking about me here. All right? It's my show. All right? <laughs> I love you, man. Thanks for coming by, man. It's been a pleasure. Pleasure's all mine. We can do this again tomorrow, you know? Dude, definitely. <laughs> Whenever you want. Whenever you want. This podcast is open. We'll find plenty of shit to definitely. talk to. We could talk for hours, and yes. I'm so happy that we yes. got to do this and catch up properly on camera. Love but it. we'll definitely Great. catch up again, Great. and I'll pass Great by the stuff. shop. And um, We're going to finish this off camera, because we're not going to yes. waste this fine exactly. non-alcoholic beverage. Definitely. And we'll just people watch in lovely St. Julian's. And it's the perfect time of it's night, I gotta say. Summer, my favorite time of day. What is it? Golden hour. Favorite time of the Golden year? Hour, not Golden shower. Hour? Golden <laughs> hour. <laughs> Golden <It's>, yeah, what? <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, bro. Cheers. Thanks for coming by, man. Your Peace pleasure. out, guys. Cheers.